This is a basic presentation on opcsystems.net on the fastest way to access your real-time data from both hardware devices and software applications and share them with multiple client applications even over the internet. In this video we're going to show you where to download the software, how to set it up, how to view the evaluation guide, then we're going to show you how to connect to a few data sources like OPC servers and how to log that data to a SQL Server engine and then we'll go through a presentation on how to develop an HMI trend and alarm client application using Visual Studio. To download the software visit the website opcsystems.com select the downloads page and enter your contact information. You'll be directed to a download page where you can download either the 32-bit or 64-bit version of the software. If you're also logging to Oracle or accessing data from Oracle, also download and install these two components. All previous versions of opcsystems.net can be viewed if you scroll down the download page. Once the setup.exe file is downloaded, you'll then run it under administrative privileges and install the software. Once the setup completes, you'll select the Finish button, and then the Service Control Manager will appear where you can start the three OPC system services. If you're connecting to OPC servers that run as a desktop application, you may want to enable the OPC data fix. If you're connecting to OPC servers that run as a Windows service like Kepware, you can use the default to run the OPC systems data service under the system account. OPCSystems.net runs as a service-oriented architecture with unlimited numbers of clients to connect to the service. From the central service, we can bring in data from multiple data sources. The most common would be OPC servers like Kepware. We can also share data with third-party OPC clients and bring data in from third-party OPC clients with the product feature opcclient.net. We can bring values in from a database with dynamic queries from SQL Server, Oracle, Access, and MySQL using the product feature opcrecipe.net. We can use Microsoft Excel as a data source, both as local and remote workbooks. We can also bring in values from text files, binary files, and XML files. This is included for free with any of the product features. And the most powerful and open connectivity is with .NET applications. There we can share data with any .NET API, and all of the components to connect to the service are 100% managed. So they can be compiled to run on any CPU, both 32- and 64-bit operating system. And we can share data from web applications, Windows services, WPF applications, WinForm applications. All .NET applications can support these data components. And these come included with the product feature OPC Windows HMI.NET or the product feature OPC WPF HMI.NET. The OPC Systems.NET help file is very useful in helping developers learn the features of OPC Systems.NET. If we go to the program group OPC Systems.NET, we can select Help and there is the opcsystems.net help file. You can also start this help file directly from the configure application under help. Here's a basic intro to opcsystems.net and to familiarize yourself with all the product features you can look at features as a category. If you want to look at the data source types to look more information about that select data sources. The evaluation guide will give you quick links to download other pieces of software like the Kepware OPC server or if you don't have a copy of Visual Studio you can get a free version here of called Visual Basic Express or C Sharp Express from the Microsoft website. You can also get a free version of the SQL Server engine called SQL Server Express from Microsoft. There's the 32-bit and 64-bit installs for that database engine if you don't have a database you want to log to. And then here is the quick start section the start of it and if we expand the quick start example section we can see we have different topics on how to create HMI applications for Windows, WPF and web applications the same is true for trending, alarming, set up data logging, alarm logging, alarm notification, set up reports, set up Microsoft Excel, recipes to bring values back from a database and the free security that's included. Also under the OPC Systems Configuration section is all the reference information for any of the configuration uh, items. Under the product section is a description of each of the individual products or you can purchase the full entire suite called the OPC Systems.net suite to get all 15 product features. 
on how to license your software, you'll, you'll find that under the OPC systems configuration and licensing. And that's how to activate a license after you've made a purchase. So you can try the software fully functional for 30 days, get it all working the way you need it. And then when you've decided which product features that you need, and by the way, if you need assistance determining that product feature, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can find our contact information at opcsystems.com. So we can provide you a quote on the product features and the number of tags that you're using. And so the price of the product will range from $195 up depending upon what features and how many tags you're using. The number of client applications to connect to a licensed service is unlimited. We do not charge for the number of users that you are connecting in the application. Let's see how we can bring in some values from an OPC server. Select the program group opcsystems.net after it installs and select the Configure OPC Systems application. When you first install the software, you will be able to run it for a 30-day evaluation, and it is fully functional with all product features. By selecting Configure Tags, and then select the local service, note we can also connect to remote services as well, we will add a group, and a group names are a way you can organize your data to give it a structure. I'll just give it a name called My Group. I'll select that group and right click on it. I can add additional groups underneath of it or I can select add tag. Now when I add a tag I can select just to add one tag at a time or multiple tags. Using the one click OPC feature I'll add multiple tags to browse for a starting position within an OPC server. I'll use the Kepware OPC server. I can browse down into a particular branch within the OPC server or select the starting position to import all of the items. Optionally, you can also get the data type, description, and other attributes from the OPC server while you're adding the tags. When I select Add Tags, it goes to the OPC server and obtains all of the OPC items and automatically adds them into the real-time service. Now, there are other ways to connect to OPC servers directly from the client applications, and that's using Direct OPC. We have a different video, really short, on how to connect to OPC uh, servers in more detail, and you can view that video from our training page at opcsystems.com. Because the service is in runtime, it will begin communicating with the OPC server, and any value changes at the update rate that we specified here will be coming in from the OPC server, and we can also write to OPC items that have the right ability. You would then save the tag configuration with the Save button on the toolbar, and then under Configure Options, you can specify that file to automatically load the tags when the service restarts. Now we're ready to use the data in any of the client applications that are included with opcsystems.net. The opcsystems.net suite contains all 15 product features under one low price. Or you can choose just individual product features to create HMI applications for WPF, Windows, or web applications. Web applications are great for smartphones and iPad applications. We can also communicate with pocket PC applications, and we support real-time and historical trending for both web and Windows. OPCAlarm.net provides real-time and historical alarming and alarm logging to SQL Server, Oracle, and Access and MySQL. Also provides alarm notification and alarm summary. So the alarm notification, we can send out emails. They can also be converted to text messages to notify users of particular alarms. And this can be true for both Windows and web applications. OPCDatabase.net can log values with a resolution down to 100 nanoseconds to SQL Server, Oracle, Access, MySQL, and CSV files. We can bring values back from a database using the product feature OPCRecipe.net. We can generate reports automatically and email them using OPCReport.net. And we can share data with third-party OPC clients and also receive values back from a third-party OPC client, even over the Internet with opcclient.net. Keep in mind, all product features support Internet connectivity. opcroute.net provides the ability to transfer data from one OPC server to another, again, possibly over the Internet. opcexcel.net, real-time data within local and remote workbooks. There's no limit to the number of workbooks that you can share data from. Networking OPCSystems.net is extremely simple to do. Both client and service applications can use a standard internet connection to share data. We have a unique feature called the Live Data Cloud that comes included for free with any of the product features. Security is also free 
and we have a video specifically for that. Some of our customers in the nuclear power industry use our UDP broadcast feature, which also is included for free, to transfer data one way through networks that have communication diodes that only allow one way network traffic. Let's see one of the product features in action. One of our most popular features is opcdatabase.net, which you can access manually under configure data logging. I should point out that all of the configurations can be set up manually with the Configure OPC Systems application, but can also be set up with CSV import and export methods, which you can access from this application, or more powerful is the ability to programmatically set up all the configurations with a .NET application. And there's a free-to-use OPC Systems component that is demonstrated under the program group opcsystems.net. There is the examples subgroup and in that example subgroup is the win form example code both the OPC systems component and the OPC controls components are headless so they can be used in web applications Windows services for both Visual Basic and C Sharp applications the most commonly used feature of the OPC systems component is to programmatically set up tags and that's demonstrated under the form form configure CSV also, reading and writing data programmatically, that can be found under the forms form read values and form write values. There you'll see some really simple examples for both asynchronous and synchronous communications for reading and writing data to uh, OPC servers, .NET applications, databases. All of the data sources we talked about earlier can be accessed through this data component, even over the Internet. Let's go to Configure Data Logging. We'll select a local service enter a logging group name. We can make the logging active based upon another tag if we want to. The logging types we can do are continuous, event driven based upon a boolean or integer changing. Snapshot recording can go back in time prior to an event. We can log at a specific time of day. We can even log based upon any of the values changing. And it can be either wide or narrow based table format. The resolution of all logging is down to 100 nanoseconds. So the logging rate can be sub-second, or if you specify to log once an hour or once a day, the logging will occur at the top of the hour. The data logging feature is quite extensive, so you might want to view some of our other videos on how to update existing records, log to stored procedures, and keep in mind there's also the programmatic methods to programmatically set up data logging groups. We have some customers that use over 5,000 logging groups per service and some customers from a .NET application log data at a 10 microsecond resolution. Under the Tags tab, we'll select what tags we're going to log from the OPC system service. Here, if we want to access an OPC server directly, we can use Direct OPC. I was talking about that earlier in this video. That's how you can access data directly from an OPC server without creating an OPC systems.net tag. Let's log a few of the OPC systems tags here. These are demo tags, one called Ramp. And we can specify what the field name is here, and of course the data type that's going to be created in the database. Now I can right click in this list to export the tag list and use Microsoft Excel to set up multiple fields, or I can continue to add a few more tags manually. So you can see in just a matter of minutes, you can be logging several thousand values into SQL Server, Oracle, Access, MySQL, and to CSV files. Under the Database tab is where we specify where we're going to log the values to. I'm going to choose SQL Server as the database engine. I'm going to use the Microsoft SQL Server Admin Studio to see what the server name is to log to. Now we can also log to remote database engines as well. Just as reliable because we have a data buffering feature I'm going to show you in just a moment on how to set that up. So if you have a network loss or a database engine failure, all of the data is maintained. So I'm going to put in, I'll put in a database name here called a new db and a table name called data. We'll add that to the configuration and now the service it has created the database and the table along with the field names that we have defined here and is now logging at a one second frequency into the database engine. So let's go look at that and see how to access that data. One of our strengths of OPCSystems.net is that everything is accessible in an open format.
This includes configuration, real-time data, historical data, and of course here the data that we're logging, and this is also true for our alarms that set up with the alarm logging feature, you can access them easily with open query statements. We'll execute this query, and there we have the values returned. So there's no proprietary DLLs required in order to access your own data. So there we've demonstrated how to access values from an OPC server and log them to SQL Server. And this one product feature alone of opcdatabase.net will do everything that I just demonstrated for you. I want to show you under Configure Options where you can access that data buffering feature. And let's select the local service under Configure Options. There we see the default tag configuration file I mentioned earlier. Also, we can set up the default data logging configuration file and other configuration files that you might set up. Under the data buffering tab, that's where you'll specify a drive and directory to generate binary files when there is a network problem logging values to a remote database engine or if the database engine itself is in some kind of administration mode where it's not accessible. So during any kind of network loss, the files will be buffered into this directory and it can be uh, the error could be occurring for a long period of time, days or months, and when the connection to the database engine is restored, all the values out of these files will be transferred over to the database one by one, and you will have lost no data. That's also true if you're logging values from a remote networking uh, service. So if under the data logging configuration, instead of logging local tags, I could specify an IP address, network node name, or registered domain name here, and then I would be browsing and connecting to those tags remotely on a service, and if that network connection is lost, that data source service will also buffer the files into this directory that we specify here on the data source. Let's see how to use some of the other product features. If we go back to our help file, opcsystems.net, under the quick start example, we also have set up on how to generate HMI applications, how to set up trending, and how to set up alarming. I'm going to do all three of, of those for you in a WPF application. If you're new to Visual Studio and haven't developed uh, WPF applications before, you may want to use what are called the quick start templates. Those are under the Visual Studio 2010 template subgroup under opcsystems.net. What you'll do is you'll install these for either the 3.5 or 4.0 framework. I recommend the 4.0 framework for the best user interface for WPF applications because you can use the OPC WPF dashboard assembly. And that includes some nice features of bar charts, pie charts, gauges that are included for free and we can see some examples of those WPF applications if we look at say the WPF gauge example that inc is included with the OPC WPF HMI product feature under examples we can also run the WPF 4.0 dashboard application there we can see the bar chart pie chart and quick chart examples and all of the WPF applications are scalable the key to that is to use a view box in your WPF applications very easy to wrap around the entire grid for the window and then the is scalable for all screen resolutions if you need assistance implementing the view box please contact us at support at opcsystems.com and we can send you a quick easy example of that in fact a lot of our videos demonstrate using a view box included the animation video and HMI symbols library video of the examples that we have here so you can create graphic applications with WPF I'll bring up an example of that as the HMI symbols app so look for the video on HMI symbols this is a free symbol library that's an, an example of how to incorporate into a WPF application so you can develop the applications with any graphics that you would like but the HMI symbols are provided for free and there's the video that shows you exactly how to incorporate those graphics for that okay enough of the examples let's get to actually developing an application so I'm going to use Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 I'll select File, New, Project. 
And we're going to set the target framework to 4.0, and either under Visual Basic or C Sharp, I'll choose a WPF application. Once you save your project with a specific name, the next step, we want to set the target framework to the 4.0 full version. This is very important not to use the client profile, which is the default for 4.0 framework, but to instead use the full version. I'm going to show you how to set that right now. So under the Solution Explorer, you can go to Project Properties, or you can go to Project and the Project Name Properties. There's a pull down there and this will take you to the project properties. Under C Sharp you'll see the .NET Framework target right there under that application tab. For Visual Basic you need to go to the compile tab. At the bottom you'll see advanced compile options and then you, there you'll see possibly the client profile. You want to set it to the full version. For WPF applications I recommend the 4.0 framework. For WinForm applications I recommend 3.5. For web applications for ASP.NET development, you can use 3.5 or 4.0. The Web Trend product only supports the .NET Framework 3.5. The target CPU can be any CPU as the components are 100% managed and can run on both 32-bit and 64-bit operating system. So if you're developing on a 32-bit op operating system, and you're using the opcsystems.net version for 32-bit, they are completely compatible with the 64-bit version back and forth, no problems at all. We'll click OK and be prompted to save the target framework update. And now we can go to the main window, double-click on it again. The default view is the XAML code will appear at the bottom. That's text editing for your window. And we have the design editing at the top in the main window. So both will be updated if you make entries in either. I'm going to minimize the XAML window so we can make the design window much larger. Now if this is the first time you're using opcsystems.net, you will need to add to your toolbox the controls. If you don't see the toolbox, select View Toolbox. Then to add the components, we'll select, we'll right-click on the toolbox and select Choose Items. You only need to do this one time in Visual Studio, and then it will retain this. So future times you bring up Visual Studio, it's all done. From the WPF Components tab, we're going to click on the Assembly Name column, and we're going to choose all of the OPC WPF dashboard controls. I'll scroll to the top, which is the OPC WPF Alarm Control and then scrolling down what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key on the keyboard and click on the bottom control which is the OPC WPF wrap panel then by hitting the space bar a couple times until all items are selected you can then click OK and add those to your toolbox now we're ready to drag and drop any of the controls into the window let's start with the dashboard 360 gauge control this is a gauge control that just has one needle it's very simple so I like to demonstrate it but we have a really cool uh, gauge control also called the OPC WPF radial gauge you want to use this one and then follow along in the video specifically for that radial gauge and you can see you can have multiple needles and bars I'll just show you that example of that working right now It's kind of nice. If we look at the WPF Radial Gauge 4.0, that's included for free with the OPC WPF HMI product. We can have both multiple ranges and needles in the same gauge control and many, as many quadrants as you want. So it's really unlimited as to how many needles and gauges and ranges that you want to include in this. And it is scalable, so we can make it as large or as small as we like, and it does scale nicely. Again, that's using that view box property. Back to our simple gauge here, let's go to Properties, and configuring all of the controls, it's very similar to this. What we'll do is we'll go to the properties of any of the components, and what we want to do is we want to go to the value underscore tag property, select that property, and use the Browse button to the right under the properties. We can connect to a local service or a remote service. If you want to connect to a remote service, you may want to consider using the Add Network Node Alias feature, which is demonstrated in the opcsystems.net help guide 
under the section redundancy. So look for that add network node alias method. Really nice. What it does is it makes the client application for all the WPF controls switch to a particular service node. So for redundancy, this is kind of a must where you can have a client application automatically redirect from one service to another. I'm going to connect to the local service as if the application was just going to run on this box. And I'll select a tag which is sign to and value. Notice there are a lot of other properties with the tag that you can connect to as well, but value is the most common one. Now let's use the OPC WPF button control from the toolbox. We'll drag that in. And with this button control, what we're going to do is we're going to change the state of a Boolean point. Also could be uh, integer values or floating point values as well. Because the button control has a property called set value. So we'll look at set value underscore tag. We'll browse for a tag here. I'm going to use the tag called pump and the property value. That's a Boolean point. So with Booleans, you can toggle, which is the default. So if it's true and you click on the button, it'll change it to false. Or you can set it to a specific value. Or you can also do while down. Uh, you can use confirmation dialogs as well. So those are different types for just even just the Boolean. But you can also use other uh, entries like text entry with keypad or keyboard entry or numeric keypad entry. Those are great for touchscreen applications. For the button, we'll also change its color based upon the pump. So we'll go up to the property under brushes and under background 01 underscore tag, we're going to put pump dot value. And for the if that point is true, we'll display the color that's in background 01 true. Now you can have other Boolean uh, points also defined in the same background where background 1 is the highest priority. If that tag is true, that will be the color. If it is false, it will go and see if there's another tag defined in background 2 tag. If so, it will then display that color if that's true or default onto the next set of tags. So you can have up to five different discrete points changing to all kinds of different colors in the one button. Now if the button is false and all of the if all the tags are false then the background false color will be displayed which is default to red and if the data quality to the service is bad or the OPC item is bad from the OPC server the button will be yellow. We can change these colors just with the pull down. You can even put in pictures if you want to. That's a great way to uh, put in your own uh, symbols into the application so the buttons themselves can change to different. Or you can uh, use a gradient uh, type of color. I like that. So we can make this one a green gradient. And we can change the faults to a red gradient. Just to show you that WPF is really easy to make really nice looking displays very quickly. Let's add a few more common controls. Another one that's common with uh, WPF client applications is trending. So we'll select the OPC WPF trend control, drag it into the area that we want it to appear. The trend control is also scalable, so if you anchor it to a position within the window and then resize the window, the trend will automatically resize itself. Or if it's within a view box, of course it's going to resize nicely for you. So we'll go to the properties of the trend. Now, the first thing we're going to define under the trend is the chart rates. This is the default time frame that we're going to be displaying in the in the trend which is 60 seconds that's one minute and sample rate the time frame and sample rate combination cannot exceed 3600 samples for real-time trending now for historical data coming back we have a feature to return all records so you can display as as many as you like but for the real-time trend cache you're gonna wanna choose a time frame and sample rate combination that would not exceed 3600 for example you can look at up to one hour of data at a one second frequency but if you're looking at one day of data on the x-axis then you want to specify a sample rate of 30 seconds. Let's go down to the pens property where we define what it is we're going to display in the trend window and again I can choose either a local service or a remote service. Notice that only the tags that have been selected for trend point under the tag configuration show up here.
So I can select ramp, random, and sign and add those to the trend configuration. Let me show you where the trend point property is under the program group opcsystems.net. I'll start the configure OPC systems application. We'll go to configure tags. Select the local service. And if we look at the ramp point, we see that that one is already selected right here for the trend point option. I'll click OK. Let's also add an alarm control into the application. The OPC WPF alarm control can also connect to remote services. That's with the property OPC alarm network nodes. You can also set up filtering to include or restrict what data is displayed, what alarms are displayed in the alarm control. Let's go to the alarm filter property just so you can see how one of those is modified. So let's say maybe I don't want to include any of the tag events in the uh, alarm window. So I can uncheck that. And we can also filter based upon priority or based upon alarm filter groups and this is another way you can filter alarms based upon process area or process type. So to test the application what we can do is we can run it in debug mode. You can select debug start debugging to start the debug mode session. So there we see the real-time trend window updating. We see the gauge control updating with its real-time value. There's the button we can click on the button to change the pump state from true to false. And with the trend window itself, it's very interactive. You can stop it, use historical replay to access some of that data we were logging earlier. You can change any of the properties during runtime if you want to. And keep in mind, all the properties of all the controls can be changed uh, programmatically. And also here, we're changing uh, the, in the trend and alarm controls. You can right-click a lot to change those properties directly. Now to deploy your application, it's very simple because the components are 100% managed. You can simply set your compile mode to release mode and then build the application. Let me show you where you would set the release mode. Now with Visual Basic Express or C Sharp Express, it is already maybe set to release mode. But with the Visual Studio Professional version that I have here, I have the release mode selection from the toolbar. Then when you build the application, it will put all of the DLLs that are needed into the release bin release subdirectory for the application. Or you can use what is called click once deployment. If you go back to project properties, there's a publish tab at the bottom. And here is what you can do is you can specify to deploy the application to a specific URL, either an IIS uh, web server or a shared drive and directory. And then this is a great way to keep all of your applications up to date from one location. So all the users, as they run the application, they will automatically receive the very latest version that you're running. To see more information on that and a nice video on how to use Smart Client Deployment, go to the website smartclienthmi.com. And there you'll see more information about smart clients. Smart clients are kind of the best of the both worlds of both thin and thick clients. Thick clients, you had ActiveX controls and COM components. Those are the old days. Thin clients are, you know, using web browsers and things like that. Smart clients have the advantages of both thin and thick clients. They're both easy to develop and easy to deploy, but they have a very good user experience. Uh, so it's bas basically the best of both worlds is the... Uh, smart client deployment. Now if you want to try your hand at some web application, to see a live example of the ASP.NET version you can go to www.opcweb.net and you can do this from your smartphone or iPad and you can see that you can both change and read data uh, that's located in Texas and that's through an OPC server real-time that's running there. Most of our customers can implement the product features that I've demonstrated here in this video just by viewing the Quick Start Training Guide and the training videos that are supplemented in these Quick Start Training Guides.
However, if you need assistance on implementing any of our product features, select the contact page at opcsystems.com. There you'll find our contact information with our email at support at opcsystems.com and our phone number at 303-679-0898 and toll free within the U.S. at 800-533-4994. I would encourage you to explore more training under our training page with both online videos and through the opcsystems.net help file. We have a whole library of videos on both data source, client development, trending, alarming, data logging, recipes, reports, security, and also our troubleshooting video. If you have pr problems connecting to a specific OPC server, you can view the troubleshooting section both in the opcsystems.net help file and we have videos specifically on that as well. And don't forget our networking videos. We have the basic networking to connect to a service when it has a fixed IP address or if you have a data source out there that does not have a fixed IP address but still want to host data on the internet, use the live data cloud feature. Both networking features are included free, as well as the UDP broadcast feature for one-way network traffic. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on the basic features of opcsystems.net. Keep in mind, opcsystems.net is very open and very scalable, so you can range from 100 to 1 million tags per service and multiple services, so really the number of tags that you can access real-time live, even through the Internet, is nearly unlimited. And a lot of our customers create their own software products using opcsystems.net to extend their functionality in their specific industry. So we have customers in all kinds of different industries from water, wastewater, nuclear power, energy production, building management, pharmaceutical applications, agriculture, transportation. So with such an open platform and being based upon Microsoft development tools, it's very easy to integrate to all sorts of data sources and share data openly and easily.